What is up, everybody? I'm back, yeah! Ginger Runner. What's up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another GingerRunner.com review. Very excited about this review. It's the first one of 2016. I'm getting far too excited and far too noisy. I apologize. Today's review is from a manufacturer I have reviewed many shoes from. In fact, one of my favorite trail shoes from 2015, last year, the Challenger AT. Ow. Challenger ATR comes from the brand Hoka 11. Today's review is all about the follow-up to the Challenger ATR. Uh huh. The Challenger ATR. Two. And I think last year I said the ATR stands for All-Terrain Rascal. I'm going to keep that. Challenger All-Terrain Rascal. Easily one of my most anticipated shoes of 2016. I really loved the Challenger ATR version 1. I was really excited to try version 2. I was a little skeptical based off of the Clifton and Clifton 2 debacle. I had some issues with the Clifton 2 compared to the first version, which I absolutely loved. So I was a bit worried, hoping that Hoka didn't change too much in the Challenger ATR 2. Thankfully, they didn't. There are a couple of changes, and I'll point them out now. There's more padding in the tongue. I know a lot of people asked for that. The tongue and the first version was very thin now there's some padding in there there's a reshaped heel cup as well as a reinforced heel counter repositioned welded overlays across the upper the insole went from a paper thin almost non-existent version to something with a bit more cushioning the ortholite insole has a bit more padding and quite a lot more support along the medial side along the arch of your foot and overall the shoe actually comes in a little bit heavier but that is it for changes which honestly is a good thing so let's get on let's start talking about the challenger all-terrain rascal 2 things that i like things that i dislike starting with things that i like the same shoe i have to start by saying that I like that. I like that it didn't change too much. The midsole cushioning feels very similar to the first version, which is like one of the main things I really hoped that they wouldn't change and they didn't. The upper feel is essentially the same. Grip, outsole, spit and image, something I really love from the first version. I'm glad that they carried it over. I get plenty of grip in all sorts of conditions, all sorts of terrain. Run a lot of sloppy winter running in this shoe and so far so good. The cushion tongue. I know a lot of people had a problem with the first version being a real thin tongue with the added cushioning. I actually favored it a bit more. I can understand now when people really want to lock down those laces, they don't want a lot of the pain of that pressure pressing on the top of their feet. So by adding a little bit of cushioning in that tongue, you get a bit more protection. People are going to love it. I actually enjoyed it. The Ortholite insole. I think this is a big bonus. While I didn't necessarily mind the first version being so thin, once you feel a little bit additional insole cushioning, you really begin to like it. Also, this insole is less likely to bend, flop around, and slide out. While I did have this issue in the first version I didn't have it in this version where the insole actually slid after river crossings or when they get really wet this is the previous version super thin just like, oh, it's a nice fan. All right, let's move on to things that I dislike about the Challenger All-Terrain Rascal 2. There's been a change in the volume within this shoe. By adding a thicker insole, by adjusting the overlays on the top of the shoe and the upper, I feel like this shoe is nowhere near as voluminous or as forgiving as the first version, at least with the flexible upper and allowing your foot to move around a little bit, having a little bit of breathing room in there. Most shoes I wear size 11. In the Challenger ATR 1, I wore 10 and a half, and it was a great fit. Felt really nimble, nice on my foot. Was able to lock it down. After 30 miles or so, the shoe really began to break in and my foot felt awesome in there. Unfortunately, with the version 2, with the addition of the welded overlays and that thicker insole, the volume in this shoe changes. It's a lot less. I would highly recommend sizing up a half size from the first version. At least I'm going to get a size 11 in here. Heavier. I mentioned it earlier. By adding the cushioning in the tongue, by beefing up the heel counter, more weight with the insole, we're adding about 0.8 ounces per shoe, which isn't a ton. But in my size, that tips the shoe over the 10 ounce range. And that just begins to get a little cumbersome not a deal breaker but as shoes evolve you hope that they get lighter as opposed to heavier durability issues a lot of people had this problem with the first version i ran into it a couple times where there was fraying and holes popping on the medial side of the shoe sometimes on the lateral unfortunately with the second version i'm getting very similar fabric tearing here along the medial side it hasn't busted all the way through yet i actually never had a full bust through in the first version either but unfortunately with this reinforced welded overlay on the top of the reinforced fabric you're getting some major abrasion that's causing the fabric to split it's about 100 to 110 miles on this pair of shoes expect a bit of breakdown but man any sort of fabric tearing it just is it's a little too early for that and that is it for dislikes as i mentioned it's very similar to the first version which i think is a huge thumbs up especially if you're used to running in the challenger atr you're going to fit right into the atr too just make sure that the sizing is correct for you i think it's time to move on with the points quality i'm going to give them a four out of five there's a couple things i just wish would you know continue to evolve however it's a high quality shoe i enjoy running in i will continue to run in it therefore i give it a four out of five comfort in the first version i gave it a five out of five in the challenger atr2 i'm actually going to give it a four out of five only because the volume became an issue for me the more restrictive upper also became a bit of an issue it didn't influence the comfort too much it just changed the dynamics of the shoe just ever so slightly so i'm going to give it a four out of five price 130 bucks i'll give it a four out of five 
I think you're getting a lot of shoe for the dollar. And finally, looks, I'll give it four out of five. I think it's a decent looking shoe. I think the previous version's colors became a lot better as the shoe evolved, but this, a little bit more muted. I'm excited to see what sort of color versions they come out with in this year. In the meantime, I'll give it a four out of five just because I know that they're gonna do some crazy things. I like crazy. That brings our grand total to 16 out of 20 for the Challenger ATR2. One point less than last year's version. I don't think it's necessarily a different ride overall. There's just some issues and I wish they would have improved upon, but didn't necessarily. Still a solid shoe. And I'm excited to race and run in this a lot in 2016. All right, so that's it for my review of the Hoka Challenger ATR2. A reminder that I partnered up with Running Warehouse to get you guys deals on shoes, 10% off of a lot of different items in their store right now you can get the first version of the challenger for like 66 bucks plus 10 percent off brings this thing down to like 60 bucks which i think is a steal the links are in the description make sure you use the coupon code as well to get that 10 percent off and we'll also add the link to the challenger atr2s once they become available i don't believe they're available there yet but they will be very soon yay that is it for this review hope you guys liked it if you did make sure you like favorite and share this video make sure you subscribe to the channel youtube.com slash the ginger and lots of reviews films all sorts of things coming this year i'm so excited make sure you follow on all the social networks over on twitter it's at the ginger runner on facebook facebook.com slash the ginger runner on instagram it's at ethan newberry also the website gingerrunner.com and if you would like to become a member of the patreon crew all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash the ginger runner lots of perks on the back end lots of really cool things happening over there so please help support this channel and every single monday live at 6 p.m pacific standard time we do ginger runner live guests all year long you're not going to want to miss them i hope you guys are getting out there training hard racing harder and partying the hardest i know i am we'll see you guys next week okay goodbye <laughs>